Hey, Bans Geek here, and today I'm going to talk to you about what I consider the most important settings on the Helix units. Alright, so when I talk about the settings on the Helix units, I'm talking about Gen 1. Now, some of this will you know, carry over to the Gen 2 stuff. I just don't have the Mega. Um, so we're going to focus on, as far as side and down imaging go, you'll hear me talk primarily about the 455 kilohertz and the 800 kilohertz and the settings on that as far as down imaging go. Now, I'm, this is going to be a quick and dirty, what I think are the most important settings to get you on the water and I trim things down and keep it really basic so that I can get to what I need quickly to find the fish that is the most important thing all the other stuff you know really we want it to work behind the scenes as much as possible uh, to help us locate or once we've located stay on the fish but what I'm going to show you is not every setting in the units, but the settings I think are most important. So let's get started. Let's talk about views. Now in the views, uh, in the views menu, you're going to be able to go in and, you know, allow them to be visible or hidden. You know, I go in and really pare down these. You can see I've got a lot that are hidden. And the reason why is because you know I just don't use them that much and I want to be quick on the water you know this these aren't touch screens so they're not quite as fast as you know the touch screens about changing views again these units are preset a lot of the views are preset so you have to kind of you know hit the view button that you can see right here and kind of run through the different views now you've got three preset buttons right here and these are the most important views that you're going to actually use so what I would recommend doing is setting the three most important views and to me the three most important views are going to be number one side and down or down and side number two is going to be the sonar down and side imaging and number three is just going to be a full screen of my map and what this enables me to do is I'm able to quickly switch between views and I do it a lot especially if I'm using my side and, and down scan here and I'll jump back as I'm looking to uh, line up on a waypoint keep it simple be able to get to what you need to get to quickly and efficiently that's the name of the game as you're trying to uh, locate locate fish so now moving on to our sonar let's start with the 2d sonar now guys as you can see i've got my sensitivity up it's 1 through 20 i've got it pretty high got my contrast up 1 through 40 about halfway um, Upper range, I set it at zero feet. I don't. I want to be able to see the entire water column. Lower range, I just leave it on auto. Now, most of the time, I will give you a tip. You know, on my lakes, they're generally uh, highland reservoirs, which means the banks are steep to steeper. <laughs> so, a lot of times, you know, I'm not dealing with large flats. I'm dealing with uh, extremely steep you know 45 to 90 degree banks so uh, it's it's a little easier for me to leave it on auto a good tip is to set it about 10 to 20 feet deeper and you can see luckily enough I'm right about that range and auto seems to keep it there for me so you can get a good range of the bottom now you can see jigging mode I have jigging mode off uh, now, if I was up on the front of the boat, if I had my unit on the front of the boat and I was vertical fishing, I may cut that on. Chart speed, generally, uh, I'll keep it on about halfway, uh, you know, when I'm idling. 90% of the time, I'm going to recommend that you run it at the 83 or the 200 kilohertz. 
And what that does is it gives you the best of both worlds. 83 kilohertz is gonna give you a wider range, a, a wider coverage on the bottom where 200 is gonna give you a tighter cone. So you're gonna see less area running them, but it's gonna be much more uh, defined. So running them both gives you sort of the best of both worlds. Now to go down, you'll see I do have surface clutter set at two, you know, cut back a little bit of the surface cut, clutter. Uh, this is the 2D setting. I do have it in clear mode. You can have it in max mode. It's just gonna have a lot more stuff uh, in the water. I, I think clear mode works pretty well on these. Uh, switch fire imaging, you know, I do have it on max mode so that we can uh, get the best of both worlds. Fish ID, I have off. Uh, fish ID sensitivity, uh, you know, since it's off, it doesn't really matter. And I do have my depth lines turned on in case there is fish that are suspending. I can get a, you know, somewhat of an ideal uh, as to how deep they are if I want to throw a bait to kind of get down to that suspending level of the fish, that, that depth level of where the bass are. So that pretty much does it on my 2D sonar. You know, again, on here, you know, uh, the most important settings are gonna be in the first menu. So you hit menu one time and it brings up the first. Your sensitivity, your contrast, uh, those are gonna be the most important settings that you're going to constantly uh, use. Uh, you, can, you can change that and you, you will have to change that depending on the bottom how much clutter is in the water. Uh, you can you can kind of trim out the clutter. So a lot of times, you know, like today, for instance, there's a lot of clutter, a lot of floating debris in the water. And, and, and I try and kind of clean that up a little bit to help me differentiate between that and the fish. All right, so I hope you can hear me over the engine noise. And now we're gonna talk about the side and down imaging. If you'll notice, I've got it on 800 kilohertz. Now, 800 kilohertz is really going to show you the structure very well. It's going to really break it up and define it. Now, I like a heavy return, and you can notice that it's it's kind of dark. You know, it's it's kind of dark right there. So that's the thing. You know, 800 kilohertz does not penetrate bottom or the water as well as the 455 kilohertz uh, signal does. So you'll really have to tweak it out, you know, if you're changing depth levels. And I notice we come up into about 34 and we got a really good return right there. Now we should be coming across some trees here. You should really start to see those, see the definition. You can actually see it coming all the way down. You really see it on the side scan here. But it really makes each individual branch stand out. Now here's the, the negative to this, is that you can't always see the fish as clearly on the 800 without really cranking up the sensitivity based on, you know, what, uh, what uh, depth level you're in. So if I'm really gonna look for fish, and I know that there's gonna be some fish here, like I can see some fish, but I can tell a little better about the size or, or what type of fish when I have it on that 455. And there was some fish over here earlier, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I like to do for each one, both the down and the side on the 800 kilohertz. So we'll hit menu one time. And the active pane right now is the side imaging. And most of the time, guys, let's start right off with range. So the range is really gonna vary. It's gonna vary, you know, how wide and how flat the section of lake that I'm scanning is. Now, right now, we're in a, we're in a, a fairly wide section and it's, it's not too flat, but it's flat enough. You know, 85 is a, is a good, uh, good swath of the lake that I can look at and still d discern on these nines if there's uh, if there's fish there. 
Now, you know, I will, in some areas, I will go up as high, you know, as 110 or 15 feet. But, you know, most of the time I'm gonna stay in that about 85, 60 to 85 foot range on these hummingbirds. Uh, now you can see a fish actually right there. That's a fish. If you can see that going out of your screen there behind the tube. So, now that being said, let's go in. Now you'll notice, and guys, the thing you're gonna have to remember is you're gonna have to tweak these settings because you never know, you know, bottom hardness. You know, this area right through here, as it gets deeper or as it falls away from you, and I'll show you a perfect example of that here shortly, uh, it will look darker. As it rises, or it's a harder bottom, it'll be a little brighter. Here's your creek channel, it kind of fell away from us, and here's some, some harder bottom. Now, that being said, let's go, and the most important settings to me is in the SI Enhance. I go in here quite a bit. I can tweak my sensitivity here if I want to, if I want to get a little brighter return, just real quickly. That's a good quick setting to understand. You can come in and brighten it up, get a little more sensitivity. But in the SI Enhanced, generally, the rule of thumb for me is two above or two below. And I, it seems like I get the best returns doing that. So basically, you got 13 on the contrast, 15 on the sensitivity. So we are two above on the sensitivity, two below. Now sometimes, you know, I'll want a little more contrast. So I'll go two above. But most of the time on the side imaging, I'm gonna stay right there, the 14 or 15 sensitivity to contrast, uh, two above, two below. That's a great place to start. All right, now let's talk about chart speed. And guys, you'll kind of notice, I generally keep my chart speed on about five. Now, I'll generally match it to my uh, boat speed, but most of the time, I'll keep it on five. I get a better return. Sometimes if I'm you know, really going slow, I'll cut that down. But most of the time, I'm gonna keep it about one mile per hour above whatever speed I'm idling at. So if I'm going five, I'm gonna try and keep it at a six or a seven. So one to two miles per hour, or one to two uh, clicks above the mile per hour that I'm going. Uh, for me, for this boat, for this setup, and the boats, and the setup, and the transducer location is gonna, of course, play a lot into affecting, you know, your speed of your graft and, and getting the best sonar return. So you're, but, but again, a good rule of thumb is that four to five on the chart speed. That's, uh, that's generally a really good uh, starting point. And that's what I'm giving you guys, good starting points. Now the color that I like, and this is all personal preference, but I think I have the best, uh, the best image, of course, is the SI, the uh, palette number four. It's the brown palette. You know, Ot Defoe actually told me about this, and I, I, I've, I've just went out and I've been using it from the get-go, and I really like this palette. But you can go in and play around and see you know, what palette you like. Palette four is what works for me. So remember, we're talking about the settings for the 800 kilohertz uh, side and down imaging. Now let's go ahead and let's flip over to the down imaging. Now on the down imaging, I like a good, strong return. It really helps differentiate between bottom and fish. So you'll notice that I have down sensitivity turn way up most of the time especially again when i'm using the 800 kilohertz sonar again the same sort of thing we're going to go into the di enhanced now here you'll see it's way off but again i'll tell you a good starting point you could very easily 
as you can see, you still have a good return, but a good starting point is sensitivity to above the contrast. Sharpness I always have off. The rest of it is pretty much the same. Chart speed's gonna be the same, you know, lower range, you know, how that your depth is gonna be auto, upper range, I set it to zero. Uh, and the down, uh, the palette I'm gonna use again is gonna be the brown palette. So now let's go ahead and let's move on to the 800 kilohertz. And, and I've got some fish located over here. We might be able to get, uh, get some shots of some fish. Uh, I wish I could get them to bite but uh, uh, I've got some fish over here that are, that are located. I can't seem to get them to bite today to save my life. So what you'll do is you'll just hit menu twice, you'll scroll down and you'll change to 455. Now immediately, you're gonna notice that it gets brighter. And the reason that is, is because the 455 kilohertz penetrates deeper. It's a stronger, louder signal and so you're going to get a brighter return now you'll notice again i told you there's a lot of a lot of clutter in the lake today so what i generally do is i come in and again we're going to go to the left pane so we'll start with the down imaging to begin with and what i generally do here is again i go into the di enhance and what i do here is I, I really like 14 and 12. That seems to be a good all around section, but if you have a lot of clutter like I do today, one of the things that you can do is you can go in and you can really tweak out, turn your sensitivity down, and you can tweak it out to where you clear up some of this stuff in the background. But again, two above, two below again you'll see i use the brown palette palette number four and all the other settings are the same speed again at five so let's switch over to our side image side imaging pretty much the same again we're going to keep it at 85 we're going to make a little tweak we're going to come in here we're going to drop it down to 14 we're going to drop it down to somewhere in the neighborhood of about two below now, you'll notice I'm getting a really strong return here to my left. You notice how that's really blown out? Well, that's because the creek channel, and you can see the, creek, the edge of the creek channel here to my right. This is the edge over on my right side. This is the edge of the creek channel. We're actually right over top of it on my left. And we're getting a hard return because it's a very steep wall here to our side it drops off very abruptly and that's why you're getting a kind of a blown out image now what you can do and there's some fish you can see right there that's actually what fish will look like there's some on the side imaging now i can't promise you those are bass they may not be but that's generally what fish are gonna look like. And if you can see right there, that may also be a fish. But I'm gonna take you back across the same group of trees that we had earlier. So we're gonna go back across these trees. I'll let you see the difference in, uh, in really clarity. It doesn't you know, really separate the limbs as well. So when you're looking at structure, there's something. So when you're looking at structure, a lot of times you're better off using the higher, uh, the higher frequencies, the 800. And now on the megas, you've got the 12. You can see there's your laydowns. There's what they look like. You know, th those are basically lay downs that are coming down into the water there. You're seeing the top of them. That's some lay downs. There's some branches. Now, if you'll look, the, the dark right here, you get a bright section, a dark section, and another bright section. There's another tree we're getting ready to cross. That is a creek channel. So we are right kind of over top that creek channel. It's a little too our our left right there 
this is the boat and that's how many feet you're seeing out to either side as it scrolls down so this is what we're crossing there's some bait fish you can see see them right there in the down imaging might be a few few fish out there feeding on them i don't know what kind that is there's some more bait fish that's a that's a big ball of bait fish down on the bottom you can see they're they're deep there's some now they're suspended up off the bottom there's not a ton of them Look at that, feeding. Feeding on some bait fish right there. So as per usual, I didn't get an outro while I was out on the water. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do it now. I hope this helps you guys get a little more confident in using your electronics. Now, as the season goes on and the deep bite really gets going, I'll be sure to show you some, uh, you know, what the fish look like. Now, I know you might have even more questions. Uh, feel free, put those questions in the comment section below. You know I love to talk about fishing with you guys, and I'm serious when I say that. I love to talk about fishing. I answer every single comment, and I'll do it until the day I die. Like it if you like it. Please don't forget to subscribe, and you guys rock.